Welcome to another episode of I'm Dying to Tell You. This is Dr. Mark Goulston, and this is part of a series of episodes in which I'm sharing with you in an unscripted, unedited, as you can just tell, a raw and first take form, things that I'm learning as uh, I'm approaching this uh, part of my life. Uh, and hopefully I'll be around for a while. Uh, and today I wanted to talk to you about being inspired by a book by uh, a three of my good friends and members of the 100 Coaches uh, organization that was founded by executive coach Marshall Goldsmith. They have an upcoming book called Becoming Coachable, Unleashing the Power of Executive Coaching to Transform your leadership and life. And that got me thinking about what does it mean to be coachable? What does it mean to be teachable? And what does it mean to be trainable? And I'm not sure if I shared this on a prior podcast, but something I heard from a documentary on Mr. Rogers, uh, it was a, a lesser known documentary called uh, Mr. Rogers and Me. And one of the things that Mr. Rogers shared was it's better to be deep and simple than shallow and complex. Better to be deep and simple than shallow and complex. And uh, part of what I've tried to do all during my life is to simplify things, mainly because what I've noticed for decades is when it's not simple, and unless you're talking to people who are exactly on the same wavelength as you, you vary into something that's a little complicated and beyond what they can understand, uh, they may start to smile politely, but often that smile is because they've tuned out. So I was thinking about what does it mean to be coachable, teachable, and trainable? And what I've come up with, and I hope this will help you, is that being those is not about the coach or the teacher or the trainer. There is a famous saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that could probably be applied also to the coach appears or the trainer appears. And what does ready mean? The majority of people don't do what's important. They do what they care enough about. With my health condition, it's important for me to eat really healthy and exercise. And I'm a bit of an idiot because I don't care enough about that yet. I may share in a future episode, guess who's eating healthy and exercising, but I don't care enough about it just yet to do it. Caring enough about something means you're committed to take action, and not only committed to take action, but you're committed to take action and keep taking that action when the novelty goes away, when it appears to be difficult, because that's what caring enough does. So regarding the question of whether you're coachable, teachable, or trainable, I think what it comes down to is, first of all, you have the right to find out, and you should find out, what are you going to get from it? What are you going to get from the coaching? What are you going to get from the teaching? What are you going to get from the training? And whatever that is, it needs to be something that you care enough about that you'll take action. And again, you'll keep taking the action when it gets a little bit difficult, because in all of these situations, you're probably going to have to change a little bit. But the more you care, the more you're willing to change. So if you're a coach, if you're a teacher, if you're a trainer, uh, now maybe I'm in a different, I am in a different stage of life than all of you. But I will tell you 10 years ago, when I was reasonably well, I made a decision 
to stop trying to persuade or convince another human being to do anything. It was too exhausting. And even when they agreed, the likelihood of their following through was very low. And so instead of that, what I went about doing is finding out what truly matters to people. And a lot of times they're not even aware of it. And one of the ways you can find out what truly matters to people is to ask them, what matters to you? And they'll tell you. And you pause and you say, I get that, but what really matters to you? And they're going to go a little deeper. Uh, and I keep repeating that, rinse and repeat. Well, I understand that too, but I, I don't think we're getting to it. Well, what really matters to you? Uh, and you may even reach the point where they think they're telling you what really matters to them, they get angry at you. And you can even say to them, uh, what about what I'm asking just made you angry? And the idea is when you can drill down and reveal what really matters to someone beyond all of your competition, much in many of your competition will assume that, well, we're having an adult intellectual conversation. And when they say what matters to them, well, I assume that matters to them. And then if they want to achieve it, I assume they'll be motivated. But in all likelihood, uh, uh, unless they're really disciplined, unless they're really a super superstar who can tell you what matters to them, and darn it, they're going to get that with or without you, with or without coaching, teaching, or training, or with or without coaching, teaching, training from you, they're going to they're gonna do it because they're that motivated. So if you're a coach, teacher, or trainer, yeah, I would suggest you drill down and find out what truly matters to people. Uh, because if you can find out what truly matters to them, you may actually find out what they truly care about. Now, there's sort of an interesting side issue, and uh, you know, I, I won't share any particular bias, but there are a number of people in financial services, investors, uh, lawyers, salespeople. What truly matters to them is making money. They're capitalists and getting raises and getting bonuses. And so they may not be that interested in learning uh, a skill or being coached or being trained, uh, but um, they may be very interested in what's going to get them a raise, what's going to get them a promotion, what's going to get them more stature, more power. And, and so you can find out about that. And then when you get them to talk about that, and don't be judgmental, you know, just that that's their right, but get them to talk about those areas in a way that where they're smacking their lips. Like, so what would it look like? What would the biggest raise look like to you? Wow. What would the biggest promotion look like? Oh my God. Yeah. And what could you do with all that money? Oh, that would be amazing. So are you really excited about that? Yeah, yeah. So are you excited enough that we can reverse engineer into what it is, first of all, that you need to get done so someone will give you that money, give you that uh, uh, promotion? You know, uh, because you seemed really excited about it. You were salivating. You had to wipe your mouth. I have to wipe mine. <laughs> I get so excited. Uh, and then when you find out what that is, uh, you reverse engineer and say, so what would you have to get done so the people that can give you the raise uh, or a promotion will give it to you? And then you drill down and say, well, to get that done, what is it you're going to need to be able to do, you know? 
uh, I can understand getting that done, but what skills are you going to need to learn? You know, if you're a leader or manager, to get that done, you're going to have to get results through people. If you're not doing it directly, you're going to have to get results through people. So what are you going to have to learn to get those results through people? And you might say, well, stay on top of them. Well, in this day and age, uh, you stay on top of people. It's going to bounce back at you. Uh, we're in, maybe, in, uh, I think it's good to be sensitive about psychological safety, but uh, you need to be very careful. And bullying it just is not going to work. It should never have worked, but it did for a while. So coaching can uh, help you. And executive coaching can help you get the most from people by inspiring them to give it to you as opposed to bullying them. And in terms of uh, being teachable, what is it that you need to learn and understand so deeply that if you're going down a certain path and it doesn't work out, it'd be helpful if you understood more because then you could pivot. So what is something that having a deeper understanding would help you with? And then finally, what is a particularly amazing skill uh, that you could be trained in? So I don't have an answer for this, but if instead of being afraid of artificial intelligence replacing you, if you could be trained in a way to work with artificial intelligence, to collaborate with it, uh, to use it constructively, uh, as opposed to seeing it as the enemy, uh, you have a future. So I hope you find that helpful uh, if you're a coach, a teacher, or a trainer. And don't try to push people. Don't try to persuade someone or convince them too hard because it's just not going to last. So until the next episode, take good care.